Hello, my name is David Hosey from Hosey Consulting and Training, and today we're going over the draw. The draw is the fundamental starting point pistol craft. Oh, everything works on it. The pistol is essentially a reactive weapon, which means you don't get to start the fight, somebody else does. So a good draw is where pistol craft begins. Today we're going to go over the draw in, in, in just a basic overview and how it works and the steps of it. Whether you're at 50 yards, 100 yards, or at five feet. The draw is the same, each and every thing. You learn one draw, it works across the board. Okay, we'll cover really quick the basic assumptions we're making here. The assumption is we can't predict that we're going to be in a fight, we can't predict how close the fight's going to be, how many opponents it's going to be, or anything else. This is a reactive gun. You put it on today because something might happen, not that you knew something would happen. If you knew something would happen, you would carry body armor, a long gun, and a bunch of your friends, or better yet, the police who are paid for it and have all the liability issues much more better covered than you. So all our assumptions on the stance is you don't know how the fight's going to play out. So let's get on to the stance. Stance first, and then the draw. Stance, like all good fighting stance, start with a leg. All good fighting arts start to have good footwork. With you. We're not going to go too much into footwork today. But the basics of the st stance are to allow me to square up to my target so I can simply push out to it point my, and point my whole body out. So my toes point at the target. Roughly shoulder length apart to be a little further, a little narrower. What fits your body and what works for you. My off foot is going to be slightly forward and my rear foot otherwise to take the recoil of it. This works for pistol, rifle, various various hand-to-hand -hand martial arts, and it's a good fighting stance. It also allows quick movement for me for me to work with if I, if I need to move in a fight. And then most importantly, when we don't know what's going to happen in the fight, when guns come out, people start running around and panicking. People are going to run into you. It could be people on your own side. It could be people that are even working, fighting with, for you or, non, or non-combatants, whatever. Or somebody close in could be, could be actually physically hitting you and shoving you. A good solid braced thing here with your weight slightly forward will allow you to take pushes and shoves and stay there and not end up on your butt. That um, fighting down the, uh, in the supine position when you get back will be a whole other course of instruction. Now that we've got the assumptions on and our good stance and a square towards the target, we're going to go over this, the, that draw exercise. It's going to be a four-step exercise. It'll happen seamlessly as you do it, but break it down to four steps for warning. Number one is I'm going to sweep back. If I have any covering garments here, pull up and get a good grip. This is no, the number one. I've got a good solid grip on the gun. Next one, I'm going to rock it in here so I can shoot close in if need be. Third one, I'm going to slap it together so I have the hands here. I get my hands together here instead of out here, so I'm not trying to put my other hand in front of the gun and get it in front of the barrel. I slap here, push out, and onto the target, and can shoot. Any point along here I could shoot. Of course, I can shoot here, I can shoot here, I can shoot here. You can shoot anywhere but number one where you first draw. Um, to illustrate how it works in keeping on the target the whole way, I'm going to put this gun down put on the back belt here and use a laser equipped firearm to illustrate it close in on the target here. Lasers on fighting guns have both pluses and minuses, but they're really excellent for illustrating a point with this green laser here. So number one, number two, I'm on the target and pointing at it. I've been pointing with my finger since I'm a baby. You have too. It's how babies point at things and communicate things. With my left hand here, I can point at the camera, I can point at the target, I can point at my classroom over here. Everything. So keeping the trigger finger aligned 
the side of the gun allows you the point here. Number three position still pointing at the target. Number four, I push out. And just the last little bit, I align my sights with a quick flash sight picture. The gun is aligned the whole way as I push through. I can close my eyes, look over here, align here, here, and then here. It's that basic pointing method you've used since you've been a baby. Now I'm going to set this back aside again, get the other pistol. And we're talking over the draw in one hand. You notice that I'll be using two hands on this. And two hands are really good on the gun. It allows you to control recoil better, more accuracy. It squares that whole body, getting that whole push out control of the gun on it. With all advisable, always fight the gun with two hands. But operative word of handgun is hand. My other hand may be defending someone myself from an attack at my head, pushing a loved one away, getting things out of the way. It may even have a light out looking at something before I draw. Your draw should be able to be done one-handed. So if I, this hand is up here doing something, I can just one, two, three, four, and do it. And this draw is the same whether I'm doing an appendix carry, whether I'm doing it with a shoulder holster or small of the back. It, it, it remains the same. If I add a second hand to it, so much the better, but it should be able to be a one-handed draw. If I need to, if my right hand is caught up doing things, the left hand should be able to do the draw just as well. One, two, three, four, and just build it out. You'll see some people, especially the appendix draw things, there's some pluses and minuses to appendix draw, but a lot of the people teaching it right now have their offhand ripping like this and then just driving straight out. Two things wrong with that. One, your other hand may, doing something, may be doing something important, like making sure your head's not caved in with a baseball bat. If you practice that draw and then you're going to be fiddle, fiddling with one hand trying to, to pull things because you've practiced the two-handed draw a thousand times. The one time you need it, it's not working. Real, reality is different than training. Another issue with here is a lot is driving through straight four. Always have number two here. The driving here can get grabbed easy and it doesn't work because, I, again, basic assumption, I don't know the distance of the fight. I used to train with a draw here and drive out really quick underneath. Did it a thousand times. And first time I needed a damn pistol. The guy's too close to me. Knocks the gun out of battery. He did a pistol whip in him. Um, and got through with an aggression. That I lucked out and had a bit of aggression to get through me with it. Helped me realize the training where the four-step draws really needed. Always have this number two position. Always be ready for whatever distance the fight's going to be at. Now let's practice this. It doesn't need to be practiced 10 times. It doesn't need to be practiced 100 times. It needs to be practiced like 1,000 times. Preferably after good instruction. And then practice maybe your offhand draw 10, 20%, depending on how, what, what you can do. Practice this dry, practice it live, practice it at all the different ranges, is whatever ranges allow you to, at whatever public or private range allows you to do. Like what you've seen here, and want to learn more of the martial art of the pistol and carving, please contact me at Hosey Consulting and Training. Unlike big box training where they do 20 people at a time, we do individual tutoring in small groups, no more than four or five. Also on your schedule, you can call, make an appointment or email, and we will fit the training to you. We have all well, we have set pro programs we can go through. We also have specific things that we can tailor to you. You want to learn more night work, night vision, street clothes, body armor, around vehicles, around buildings, we can, we, we can gauge it to you. You want to concentrate more on pistol, carbine, a mix of both, we can all do that to you. And make it work for you at your individual needs at your individual pace. We have affordable rates. Please contact us at the web link below the video.
Thanks for your time and consideration.